Hi, we're back in Maya again. Um, we're going to set up a workspace so we can start a proper Maya project. Right, so Maya likes to keep everything together. Um, its project is a combination of image files and references and um, data stores and bits and pieces and a scene file which tells you how all those things go together and they are kept together in a project folder so the first thing you have to do is set a project folder now i've made a project folder ish well i just made a folder and i've called it maya project and it's just on my desktop so what i now need to do is tell maya to work from this project so if i go file set project i can go desktop maya project set and it's going to ask me if I want to get a default workspace in there. Now, this is where it keeps its project preferences and says, um, there's all the things that we want to go, and this is how it all goes together. So you go create a default workspace. Now, if we go back to that folder now, we can see we've got a workspace.mel. So that says, how do things go together? But it, what it doesn't have is a project structure yet. So we need to go file project window. And this says current project, Maya project, primary project locations, there's a folder called scenes, a folder called assets. If we just go accept and then open that folder back up again, you can see that now we've got a bunch of um, folders in there for us to keep everything in. Now, my design images, which is a front image, a side image, and a top image, which was there already, I'm going to get those and put them in source images because that's where Maya looks for images that it's going to use in the scene. So if I hit the space bar and come out to these separate windows, I can go front, make it big screen, go view, image plane, import image. And this is front, so I'm going to go front, go open. So there's my character image. Now I want to put his feet on the ground, so I'm going to go W, which is select move, and lift him up onto the ground like so. Now if I hit the space bar, you can see here's my reference drawing floating around in the middle. I'm going to push him back a little bit because I want to model in front of that drawing. So I want to have the drawing behind it. And that's not going to make any difference to the front view because we're going to go, if I hit F, there's my front drawing. Okay, cool, hit the space bar. Go to side view, hit F if you want, uh, although probably not going to help. View image plane, import image, we go side because we're side, open, and lift him up, put his feet on the ground like so. Hit the space bar, come into the perspective view, and then move that image plane out. I'm going to rotate it so I can see that it's just beyond the fingertips. And then that's going to be my side view. So if I come here and go in the top view, I can go view, image plane, import image, go top, open, and that's my top view. Now I'm going to leave that in the middle there. My only thinking that I've got with this is I think the top view is not quite the right size. So I'm going to bring it up until the fingertips come together. This is me just checking the sizing of it. And I can see that the top view is just that little bit bigger where those fingers go on top of each other there. And if I move view forward. until you're in the middle of that finger there and you get the top view and line it up with that then I really have got that pretty much in the same place and I can see that that top view is a bit too big so I'm just going to get this and go 0.9 in the scale so that's way too small so if I go again and go 0.98 Oops, that's too big 0.95 Too small <laughs> I'll get there in the end 
point nine six. Oh, nearly there. Point point nine seven. Point nine seven. Oh, it's point nine six five, isn't it? Point nine six five. There we go. Now, and I'm just looking here where those two fingers align just to make sure that the drawings are exactly the same size. Now, we could put that now. Why translate back to zero? And so we're there. And um, yeah, I think that's not too bad. I'm going to get that image and put it back behind that. So, okay, so there's our three reference images. So, if I go in the side view, I can see what shape it should be in the side. If I go in the front view, I can see what shape it should be in the front. If I go in the top view, I can see what shape it should be in the top view. So that's kind of cool. Now, I want to model in front of these images, and at the moment it's very easy to select them. And so if I keep clicking around the scene, I'm going to select these things, and I don't want them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this here, which is the layer editor. And I'm going to get all those three planes there, and each plane one, two, and three. And I'm going to go to this end button here and go create a new layer and assign selected objects. So let's put all those objects um, on that layer. I'm going to double click on there and call it ref images. All one word with a capital I. Save. And what that allows me to do is go either make them transparent, you can't see them. Or I can make them R, which is reference, and I now can't select them, they're locked. I can still select them up here if I want to, but in the scene, that layer is locked. Also, if the image is getting in the way, I can go V, which is visibility, and turn visibility on and off. So there you go, that's that. So that's our space. And I think I'm going to start by trying to rough in a torso. So to do that, um, I want to use a cube. Now, this is curious. Normally, you can, oh, well, I can I pull a sphere around, or even a cylinder. The problem with spheres is that they've got triangles at the top. And when you're modeling professionally, you really don't want any triangles in your mesh. And so, as a default object, triangles are not that useful. Uh, Spheres aren't that useful because of that inherent triangle thing, and you just want quads, you want these four sided shapes. It's to do with um, mapping textures and it's to do with um, flexibility of surface. So, when you're animating and things move around, triangles don't bend, and so they tend to end up with a crunchy surface, and you don't want it. And so, professionally speaking, if you're modeling for animation, this is not modeling for um, sculpts and it's not modeling for 3D printing. You can have as many triangles as you like for 3D printing, but specifically for animation and games, even though games, when you move it into a game engine, the surface is triangulated and they're all triangles. For animation and modeling in the first stages for games, you need to make sure that you are quads only. And so to achieve something like a sphere, but with quads only, I'm going to start with a box, a cube, and I'm going to go mesh smooth. I'm going to smooth it to two iterations and go apply. And now what I've got is I've got something that's like a sphere. In fact, it is a sphere. It's just a sphere made out of a subdivided cube. So all the faces are quads, which is good because that's what I want. So having selected that, I'm going to select it object level. I'm going to come in the front view, and I'm going to move it up, and I'm going to stick it in front of the body there. And I'm going to go, right, it's not big enough. Um, so I'm going to scale it. So I'm going to go hit R, and I'm going to make it bigger all round. And I'm just going to set this down here. Right, um, so it's definitely not big enough at the moment. Well, it's not the right shape anyway. So I want to make bring it up to the top here. Um, so I'm going to go to right click. I'm going to go to the vertex. Now, if I select a vertex and pull it up, I'll pull one vertex up. What I want to do is I want to affect a group of vertex. 
with a certain amount of drop off. And so if I hit B, I get something called soft selection. So that's the shortcut for soft selection. Now it's pulling around too much at the moment because you can see that all the vertices are, are, um, are moving. So, but you can see that where it's yellow, it's affecting it more, and where it's pink, it's affecting it less. If I go to the hammer sign up here, which is the tool settings, this is contextual, so it depends on what tool you're on, this will change. Under the soft selection section there, we can change the fall off radius. The two things that you'll use mainly is either volume or surface. So this is the fall off will be either volumetric, which is you know a big space where everything that sits, uh, or surface, which is along the surface. And so if you're trying to pull around the top of a mouth but not the bottom of a mouth, surface is better than volume because if you have a top lip, the bottom lip will stay in the sur it stay on in the volume, but the bottom lip will be will drop off along the surface. So. Um, Normally I keep it on surface, um, but for this, volume's okay. This is the size. So the fall off is a curve. So how it falls off, you can change these different different ways of, of um, having the effect to diminish. But I'm going to bring that down to one, and then have a look at that, and that's too small. So I go two. I'm looking for it to just affect to the middle there, so 2.5 maybe. There you go, something like that. And now I'm going to pull the top up. And you can see that I can kind of start to achieve the shape that I'm looking at there. Um, if I hit 4, it displays as a mesh. If I hit 5, it's smooth shaded. If I hit 6, it's got texture maps on it, but we've not got texture maps. So at the moment, I'm just going to leave it at four so I can see through it which means I can see the drawing there. So if I get that there I can go scale but instead of slight scaling with the global thing in the middle I can just do the side to side thing and just nudge it in that way. And in fact if I turn soft selection off by hitting B I can go actually this wants to be a bit bigger this one wants to be a bit bigger. I'm just trying to move it out until it hits the edge of the drawing, and then this one wants to be a bit bigger as well. There you go, because you can see it's hitting the line of the drawing there. We will have some extra details to do. I'm going to get that line. Now, this is a handy thing that you can do in Maya. Is I'm going to scale downwards, and that scales those vertices together to make that horizontal line. I'm going to get that one and scale them downwards as well. And so now those lines in the middle are horizontal. So that's handy. Right, moving swiftly on. I'm going to go in the side view and see how that marries up with the side view. Right, so we're forward of the drawing. So if I hit full, you can see through it again. And I hit W, and then select all the vertices and move them back onto the drawing. Right, so front to back, we are too wide. So I'm going to scale, and I'm going to scale it down until it's right with the drawing. Now, that's too wide. Can move it back. Still a bit wide, so I'm going to scale it down a fraction more. Um, and then this guy up here, I want to move this around so it aligns up a little bit. So I'm going to go back to soft selection. I'm going to hit B, soft selection. Shrink that down a little bit. Go W, I'm going to move it up and I'm going to rotate it around. And you can see that that starts to match the drawing a little bit, but I kind of want this guy to be in the middle of the neck. And I'm going to move him around a bit more. And then some of these want to be changed individually, so I'm going to switch soft selection off B. I'm going to select these ones over here. Move them forward a bit, these ones here, and move them back a bit. I can't really see the line of the back there, but you can sort of guess a little bit where that might be. So having done that, we can come and have a look. Now, I've got it a bit twisted. So I'm just going to get that center line there. Go R, and then scale them back flat. Right, okay. So... That's not too bad, but we've got some bits 
where we haven't got enough information in there to do that. So I'm going to get the um, cut tool. I'm going to hold a control key and I'm going to put an edge loop in here. And I'm going to go Q to select, right click, go edge, double click, and then go R and scale that out. And we should get the beginnings of that edge there. If I go W to move, I can bring that down. And then you can see, kind of start to see that it doesn't quite line up again. So I'm going to get the, that tool again, go control, put an edge loop in there. Q to select it, and then R, and then we can start to soften it. So at the moment it looks a little bit strange, but if we go in this view, right click and select it as an object, and then hit 3, you can see that that starts to smooth off and get something like, you know, a jumper at the top and is where his legs are going to join up at the bottom there. Um, right, okay, well that will do for now I think, so I'll just put that to one. I think the next thing to do is make a leg, so I'm going to go cylinder. Now the default cylinder has got 20 edges around it and it's got triangles tops and bottoms, so we don't really want that kind of stuff. So here Subdivision caps, we can go to zero and that will take the triangles out. So we're going to dock this onto the rest of it. Subdivision's axis, we're going to go for eight because um, that makes more sense. Radius, um, I think 0.2. I'm just looking at the leg at the back there. So, we, you know, that'll rough it out. And height, two, so uh, six, something like that. Come in the front view. Hit W. We can lift it up and we can start to have a look at what that might look like. So if I put that there, where that leg is, that kind of goes right. I can, I can build a leg out of that. You know, and I can put it there. And we can start to see that, you know, you could make a leg with that. So the top of it. It's too small, so if I right click, go to vertex, get to these guys, go R, then use the global scale in the middle, and make it to the, it's about the right size for up there. Okay, that's that one. Got one here, move it down, um, we'll put it down to there, and so we've got that tapered cylinder. So First off, we need to make a definition where the knee is going to be. So I'm going to get the multi-cut tool. I'm going to come here, hold the control key, and I'm going to put that kind of where that knee is. So I'm going to go Q for select, select those vertices, W to select move, and then I'm going to move that forward. So those knees, that knee goes there. Um, Right, I'm going to bring the multi-cut tool back in again here, hold the control, okay, I'm going to stick an edge loop in there. Um, now, I want to make this cuff, so I'm going to go to face mode, right click, go face, select these guys, and then I'm going to extrude them outwards, so I'm going to go to the extrude tool that we looked at in the last session, hit extrude, get and if you want to be careful with this, make sure that you get the one that is sticking out from the center of the face, so that blue one there, and they will go out. Keep face together is on, and local translate is Z, which is outwards. So and that gives us that. I want to just double check with the drawing that we've not gone too crazy with it. We've got that. Okay, cool. So we can now go select Q, go to vertex, select all of these guys, and then just move them onto the drawing. And we might get some discrepancy between the side view and the front view. So these guys go R, maybe a little bit smaller. These guys maybe a little bit bigger. 
uh, we're kind of like we're close to where the drawing is. Most of everything else lines up as well. Right. So where it needs to be flexible, like knees and things, one line of vertices, one edge loop is not enough. So we need to add, add in some edge loops in those flexible places. So I'm going to go back to the multi-cut tool. I'm going to put an edge loop above and below the knee. It's not really enough, um, but it, it starts to show where that might be. So it's going to bend quite a lot here. So I'm going to go control and I'm going to put an edge loop there. And it's going to bend down here. So we're not worried about that too much at the moment. And then to stop getting big differential stretching when, when we smooth it between this bit and that bit, I'm also going to go control and stick in some evenly spaced edge loops. Not too many, because that would be madness. But that just gives us enough stuff to be going on with. Right. Okay. So I'm going to go Q to select. I'm just going to go to object mode and come out and have a look at those two objects all together. So we've got a leg and we've got a body. Now, my question is, do I have enough detail here? Do I, do I have enough polys to join the body onto that? I don't think I do. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to subdivide it again. I'm going to smooth it. So I'm going to go mesh, smooth, open the dialog box. But instead of going division levels two, just one. One more. Go apply. Close. So now I can see that I've got this body and I, I can use these polygons here to join to these ones here. So I'm going to right click, go face, get that one and delete it. And come here and I'm going to get face, and then that one, shift that one, shift that one, shift that one. So those are the ones that are directly on, on top of that. Sort of, yes. So this is circular, that is not. So I'm going to use the circularize function there, turn that into a circle. And I'm going to go, it's fine, but it's not big enough. So I'm going to go R, I'm going to scale it up a little bit. And we're going to have some kind of little tweaking to do. Um, but as long as we're getting it pretty much where it wants to be there. I'm going to double you. I can move it out a little bit. And we can rotate it around a little bit. E will rotate it a little bit. W, just nudging it, just so you can see where the edge of that is and the edge of that is. And once you've done that, once you've got that kind of bit where you're going to dock the leg to the body up, you know, just hit delete and delete those faces out. Now, We've got polycube and polycylinder, these are separate objects at the moment. And so I need to get one, shift select the other, and then combine them there. And that will make them a single object. Now they're a single object, I can move them together. Now, if I go edge, I think in the side view, I hit F to focus. That looks quite a little bit further back now, so I'm just going to bring that forward a little bit. Come back out. I'm going to hold shift, double click, and that's got that edge loop, and then I'm going to go bridge. Bridge the two together, like that. Now you can see there's a bit of a crimpling and whatnot, so we want to get rid of that in a minute. Um, So let's just have a look. If I come in here, go to vertex mode, get that one, go to W to move it forward a little bit. You can see, get a little bit of a flow from one edge to the next. And then certainly here, we want to change that. So I'm going to just in here and go right. These things don't match up. So that one's got to go over here. This one's going to flow through a bit more like that. Move that down there, 
Move that down there. And then get that there. But actually, we could get that as an edge loop. Like that. Go E. Rotate it around a little bit. And then you start to stage from this bit of mesh through to that bit of mesh. Right, okay. So we model the leg. Come out of here and let's have a look at that. It looks like that. And then if we hit three, whoop, in object mode, that's our guy, that's our guy. That's his jumper. That's his torso and that's his leg. Now, I'm not going to make another leg and try and match it up. So what we do with this, to keep trying and make sure that it, it works and that you're on the right track, is this. Uh, one, so it's unsmoothed, go face. Delete all the faces from the side that we're not working on, that one. Um, go back to object mode. It's got this huge... Con construction history we want to get rid of that before we do anything else with it so we'll go delete by type history and then I'm just gonna have a look at this middle scene because it looks like it's been pulled out true a little bit so I'm gonna go vertex get these ones go R which is scale and then scale them sideways together and then I'm gonna do something crazy I'm gonna pull them over here hold the X key which is snap to grid and then snap them back into the middle there that means our center line is absolutely level and absolutely in the center of the world. So if I right click and go object mode now, I can come out here and go mesh mirror. Uh, we're going to mirror axis position world X. So let's have a look. X is there side to side. So that's good. And we're on the upside, the positive side of X. So we're going to mirror direction, negative x there. So I'm going to go apply. And we've got another leg. I'm closing. There you go. And so now, three, we've modelled the torso, and we've modelled his trousers. Oh, wow, that's cool. I mean, it needs a little bit more definition. You know, we're going to put a crease in there to make that a bit tighter, and put some creases in here to make those a little bit tighter. But I think that will do for now, and we'll come back and have a look at modeling his shoes in the next one okay so i'll see you in the next video